Welcome to class today. The topic we will be covering is what is the difference between passive and active security measures? Um, those of you who are new to the protective services industry, security industry may not know the difference between passive and active deterrence to crime. And I want you to think about your role for the deterrence of um, legal or unwanted activity on the property. Keep in mind that uh, as security officers, um, you may be asked to look out for uh, rule or code of conduct violations as well as illegal activity. Keep in mind that people who don't wish to abide by code of conduct may not be in violation of the law immediately, but certainly can be trespassed. If they choose not to leave, they can uh, be tried that way. Now, a passive deterrent to crime. Think about what that means. A passive deterrent doesn't necessarily stop a crime from occurring, but if a criminal sees that passive countermeasure to their activity um, or crime, they may choose to go elsewhere to a commercial complex that doesn't have that countermeasure. Uh, that's why, um, so, when businesses or even residential homes put in a CCTV system, they want people to know it, right? They want people to notice that camera. That's why they put signs in the yard or they put stickers on the window. That's passive deterrence. An active deterrence at a commercial or residential property would be something that physically prevents uh, the criminal from gaining access. So it also intervenes, burglar alarm. That would be a active uh, security measure. You as a security officer uh, responding to alarm would certainly be an active deterrent. Now a passive deterrence would be CCTV, closed circuit television system, um, as well as um, signage as we already talked about. And a security officer may provide a passive deterrence if they see you on property. That's why it's incredibly important to remain visible um, to both the client to show, hey, look, we're doing our job. We're here on time. We're doing our security checks. We're ensuring lockups are done appropriately. Those are all things that are critical. And that's a passive deterrence. You're not actually interacting with the criminal element at that point, but if they see you, they're certainly gonna think twice about robbing that property. And um, most criminal activity is because of a crime of opportunity, right? They find an easy target, a locked door to a car or an office or a shop front that uh, the employees forgot to lock. All these concepts are in a much more advanced uh, security design role and it's all a part of crime prevention through environmental design. And as you progress from the line level security officer, you may be asked to do security audits or work with a architecture team if you've had further training and talk about lighting plans, camera placement, traffic flow, human traffic flow through the property ensuring people aren't um, going through dark areas, ensuring that the CCTV system can be uh, utilized to track people's movements. Now, obviously some areas are gonna be inev inevitably uh, no uh, cameras allowed, right? And, and then those are um, presumed uh, private spaces such as bathrooms, um, even fitting rooms. Um, Keep that in mind, uh, particularly what your country or state allows. And that's all more advanced topics, but I'm glad we got the chance to cover what a passive and active security measure is. If you have any questions, um, leave a comment below. I'll happy to answer them. Like, share, and subscribe, guys. Um, I'm happy to continue doing these. And um, as long as we progress this industry, uh, happy to share um, my knowledge and time.